Welcome to the Security Desk Alarm Management Seminar. My name is Rafael Morales and I'm going to be your presenter for today. First, we're going to talk about what is an alarm during the seminar. We're also going to talk about uh, creating a task, an alarm monitoring task. Also, the, there are several um, applications within the monitoring task that we can use to manage such alarms. And also, we're going to run some reports by opening a, an alarm reporting task. First, uh, what is an alarm? An alarm uh, is an entity uh, that describes a particular trouble situation. For example, uh, if a door is being forced, I can use alarms to uh, let the guards or operators that something is going on within the system. Uh, let's remember that the alarms are managed by our Genetech server, the directory role. And also very important to understand that alarms are not events. For example, motion on, close contact, or unit loss. Those are basically events that happen within the system. Uh, they're constantly, for example, a, uh, we can have a camera uh, that have uh, motion detection enable, and motion on will, uh, will be an event within that entity of the alarm, of the, um, of the camera, I'm sorry. Uh, but an alarm still an entity that is being triggered by some of those events. So we can have an alarm that is being triggered by the event motion on on the camera. And again, alarms are special entities and they're created to attract the user attention. In our case, we'll be the, an operator or whoever's in front of our security desk application. And again, the alarms are being managed by the directory role. And alarms uh, are designed to get the operator's attention and also is very important to understand that we uh, must be a recipient of the alarm to be able to get that alarm in security desk. If you're not uh, a recipient, uh, when we create alarms, we have to uh, add a, a recipient or a group that we need to send the alarm to. If we're not part of that group, then we're not going to get that alarm. Uh, any event uh, like we were mentioning before, uh, a motion detection on a camera can trigger an alarm using the trigger alarm action. It is sent to users or groups, and we can have different delays uh, between uh, each one of those groups. Now, when triggering an alarm, we can display multi multiple entities. So basically, when we, uh, let's say, for example, we have alarm number one, we can have that alarm or configure the alarm to bring different entities uh, onto our alarm monitoring task. We can also run reports or incident reports and we can make them uh, mandatory, for example. And also when an alarm is triggered within our system and we are a recipient of that alarm, the uh, security desk will bring the uh, alarm monitoring tasks by default. So an example of an alarm, let's say for example we have motion detection on camera, on our camera. That event will then trigger the alarm and then we can use that alarm to then trigger uh, other actions. For example, send an email, uh, show entities on my security desk application, or we can actually send a sounder. Uh, another example is uh, a force open event on our door that can also trigger or can be used as an event to trigger the alarm and then the alarm can be used then as well to send different uh, events or different actions take different actions within our system we do have a uh, uh, an alarm monitoring task that we can uh, appear like I explained before it'll appear automatically when an alarm uh, is triggered within the system and then we can have different acknowledgement options within that task. And also we can run reports, generate reports on the alarm uh, reporting task. And those can be filtered uh, depending on what kind of uh, alarm am I looking for, what kind of report am I looking for. And we can export in PDF, Excel, and comma delimiter uh, files. Now let's go and open a, an alarm monitoring task. Uh, if I go back to security desk, 
I'm going to open on the operation, uh, it's an operation task, alarm monitoring task, monitor and respond to active alarms and review past alarms. Like I mentioned before, if an alarm uh, does get triggered in the system and I'm a recipient of that alarm, this task will uh, come up automatically. For now, I'm opening the, uh, the task uh, manually here. Uh, remember, we can uh, save the task. We can rename this task, I'm sorry. Let's go to our live system and let's go ahead and open a uh, alarm monitoring task. I can do that by going into task operation and alarm monitoring. Again, as I mentioned before, if we are a recipient of an alarm and an event happens to trigger the alarm that we're working on, uh, this task will appear automatically. Again, if we are a recipient. Um, you can view all the active and pulse alarms in this canvas, which is called the alarm monitoring task. If we go here to the right side, we can actually display or have display options. Uh, we can filter by active alarms. We can filter by uh, alarms that are under investigation, show acknowledgement uh, that are required. We can actually show all the acknowledged alarms. This is all the past alarms that have been acknowledged uh, already. And we can go back and um, select the different display options that we have by clicking on this button here. But we can show all the, uh, all the alarms available. Go back and click on some of them, and I'm only going to show the uh, default settings here. Again, alarms can be uh, comp uh, actually often are composite entities uh, because they are attached to multiple cameras. Uh, we can attach doors, cameras, or areas to the uh, to the uh, uh, alarms that we have available. Um, I created a couple of alarms. Uh, let me go ahead and trigger one of those alarms. I have a car, which I uh, um, created an action, which is when access is denied, I'm going to trigger one of the alarms. I'm going to present it to the reader. And now we have uh, the information that I'm looking for here. If we can tell, this is uh, uh, the source of the alarm. It's Marlene Johnson. Uh, then we have the alarm timestamp is happening right now or my time then C we have if we actually uh, click here we're going to show that our alarm is a composite alarm and we can tell by this little eye that we have here if we click on it we notice that we have different entities within my alarm we can unpack all the entities and now we have Marlene Johnson, we have camera number five, and also camera number three. We can repack all the entities which are part of this alarm by clicking on any one of the uh, arrows, and now we're packing the uh, alarm again. And we have all the, uh, the timeline and on, uh, on tile video controls here. Uh, F, we have the condition. This is alarm uh, alarm number two. And in the case that we had a, uh, we don't have right now um, uh, procedures, but we can have more uh, or different type of um, entities attached to my alarm here. We can also stop the cycling of the alarms. and we can then also clear that alarm here actually we can go ahead now and if we select the alarm on the top here we can now acknowledge my alarm notice that we have the options to acknowledge we also can have a an alternate acknowledgement this could be for example if we have false alarms uh, as an operation we can decide to uh, clear that alarm as an alternate uh, acknowledgement we can force the acknowledgement and um, we can also snooze the alarm and it's going to uh, 
uh, snooze this alarm for 30 seconds and it will uh, appear again. We can also forward the alarm if I wanted to forward it to someone else. If we go on the top here we have the force acknowledgement of all the alarms. Um, I can actually uh, force all the uh, alarms that I have active on my system but this can only do or it can be done by an administrator. And if we notice here we have something called the start alarm auto forward. So let's say for example I'm going to go out uh, I'm going to take a, a launch break uh, but any alarm that are supposed to be sent uh, to me I can then forward it to someone else so they can investigate what the alarm is. So I can decide to send it to Raphael and he's going to start the uh, auto forward. Again, it's good to note that the same uh, widgets or applications that I have available uh, on the left side here, acknowledge, acknowledge uh, alternate, force acknowledgements, news, and forward of the alarms are also available on my uh, dashboard here. So I can snooze, acknowledge, alternate, or force acknowledgement, uh, or forward the alarm for my uh, widgets here. Okay, in this case, I'm going to acknowledge the alarm also going to acknowledge this alarm and before I acknowledge the alarm we notice that every time they come up uh, we're not coming back on playback mode this is live mode of the camera so the alarm is live and if I do have an entity uh, such a camera attached to that alarm I'm going to bring the video in live mode as shown by this now on the report we're going to see um, in a little bit and the reporting on the alarms uh, I'm going to bring video on playback mode. I'm going to acknowledge the alarm. Now I can go out and display, show acknowledgement, and now I have the alarms that I acknowledge. Now, not only we can manage all the alarms through a security desk and the uh, monitoring alarm task. We can also run reports by opening an alarm report task. Um, we can actually view and export um, uh, all the alarms using the alarm report tool. You know, this is some of the example of data that we're going to get on uh, such a report. And we have different ways to filter uh, for the alarms that we're looking for. We can have alarm types. We can uh, run a report based on who acknowledged the alarm. Uh, what kind of acknowledgement it was. Either it was an alternate or a default uh, acknowledgement. We can also look for uh, the trigger time when the uh, alarm was triggered. If we go back to the live system, let me go ahead and close this task. Again, we go back to security desk. And if we do have too many tasks, remember to, remember to use the uh, filtering tool and we can search for alarm. And this is quickly is going to bring everything with the word alarm, alarm report. We can create that alarm. And now we have not the alarm, I'm sorry, the alarm report. And now we can filter. We can see all the different filters that I can use to look for the alarm. So let's say, for example, I just want to look for um, any information on alarm number one. I can generate that report. And we now have all the alarm number one and if I double click on let's say uh, the last one here and we're gonna see the alarm that I'm looking for as you can tell now I'm playing back uh, the video it goes back to uh, the playback mode okay. we can pause video and look for the maybe uh, uh, let me go ahead and Stop the cycling, unpack, and let me work on this camera. And now I can pause and maybe look for the video that I'm looking for on that alarm. And from here, I can then export the video. Okay, let me go ahead and pack that again. But again, I can use different filters. Uh, for example, again, if uh, that alarm, uh, I want to look for acknowledgement by the administrator for alarm one and two 
generate the report and basically have the same information as before since I'm logging in as administrator. Got all the alarms available. Uh, I can run and go ahead and run a report and select the place that I want to save my report. Yeah. Thank you very much for attending our seminar. Hope the video is helpful. And thank you very much. Have a good day.